Thank you all. My name is Syed Islam. I'm a postdoctoral research associate at the Chemical Sciences Division at the Oak Ridge National Laboratory. Today, uh, I'll present our research on recovery of critical materials from electronic waste. I'll uh, point out how electronic waste are made, what materials it is made of, and uh, why recycling is necessary. And then I'll show our uh, novel technology, what we have developed for recycling of critical materials from electronic waste. So you might be a little familiar with periodic table, what you have learned in elementary school. So in this per periodic table, there are 17 elements we call a rare earth elements. Among these 17 elements, there are uh, presodymium, the four elements are very critical because of their use. Those are used in all sorts of uh, electronic devices from your p mobile. This mobile is made of rare earth elements. You, you drive a car, this, cry, this car is made of rare earth elements. Basically all sorts of magnets used, those are made of rare earth elements. Well, so the rare, although the rare earth elements are used across the world, specifically more in America, but those rare earth elements are primarily produced and mined in China. So China is controlling the market and you know the recent trade war going on between USA and China. So they are in their advantage. Another thing is that although the demand for rare earth is growing every day as the production of re, uh, electronic devices increasing. However, the production is limited, whether it is in China or elsewhere. On the other hand, this mobile, uh, my mobile is iPhone 5 and it's broken. So I might not be able to, I've been using it for six years and probably I might not be able to use it after a few months. So I need to trash it in a trash can. But the government and the environmental uh, scientists, they need to process it, how to handle this electronic waste. We just cannot throw it in the canal. So it, it also, uh, it is associated with cost. So how can we address this true challenge? Growing demand, limited production, and only the production is concentrated in China, and the challenge with the managing with electronic waste. So recycling and recovery of this rare earth from the scrap magnets can address those challenges. It can address the uh, production and the, address the supply risk and also associated with the environmental concern for this waste management. So the objective of our study is to recycle these scrap magnets and then recover the rare earths and then bring it back to the, again, manufacture the magnet and then use it. That's the purpose. So in a big picture, we can see the whole procedure. What do we do? We, so this is a scrap hard disk drive. We take it out from our west uh, laptop and then from the hard disk drive, there is a magnet, we take it out and then we dissolve in acid, we are using, so what happens, this magnet we can just directly dissolve in acid. It can consume everything in the acid solutions. Well, so this is uh, not only made of rare earth, but also other elements like iron, aluminum, boron, other things, what we, we do not need. So what do we do? This solution, we pass through a membrane. So what is membrane? Membrane is like a barrier. So it allows certain elements go through it and it retains some other element behind it. So this feed solution contains both rare earth and non-rare earth like iron. However, when it is, the feed is introduced to the membrane, the membrane doesn't allow the non-rare earth. However, it does allow the rare earth. And then we collect in, in solution form and then we precipitation happen, eventually we recover this rare earth, 
which is 99.5% pure. And then we can use it again here, from here to here to make new magnet, make new device, and then recycling. So I would like to share some data exactly how we do that in terms of chemical. So this is the feed concentration. Feed concentration means once the device is dissolving acid, this solution contains the both rare earth and non-rare earth. So those are the elements like ND, PR, this is dysprosium, presodymium, those are the rare earth. But also it contains aluminum, iron, which is non-rare earth. So what happens in the feed solution when we run the experiment or separation over the time, the non-rare earth amount, this is co feed concentration means amount in the feed. It doesn't change at all over the time. However, the concentration of rare earth goes down. That means the membrane system can take the rare earth from the feed tank. On the other hand, this is called strip or product tank. So the concentration or amount of rare earth increases over the time in the product tank. However, for the non-rare earth like iron, there is no non-rare earth comes into the product tank. So finally, these results showed that we can recover greater than 97%. For example, if the mobile contained 100 gram of rare earth, we can recover 97 gram. And then we can completely separate it is pure rare earth, nearly 99.5%. It doesn't contain any non-rare earth like the casing, alumina, or boron, iron. So here I would like to summarize our results that we have successfully developed a novel technology supported membrane solvent extraction process which can uh, recover 97% rare earth with a purity 99.5% from electronic waste. And then this process is a scalable and economically viable and environmental technology. That means uh, this technology can help secure a do domestic source of rare earth in America instead of depending on foreign nationals, as well as it can minimize the cost for the electronic waste management. I would like to thank my team members. It's a uh, team effort. So those are the team members. We are getting support from Department of Energy, Idaho National Laboratory, and our industry partner, Momentum Technologies. I would like to thank everyone. It's a great workshop. If you have any question, let me know.